Hey boys and girls, we're here with Sasha. And uh, right in back of us is the Nilo, or Nilo. 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 The Nilo. Nilo. This thing is the antithesis of, uh, of the Cybertruck. And Sasha, Cyber you have truck. to, I so do I. I got one. But I'm telling you, you've got to tell us a little about this. Let's start with the engine. Let's. Yeah. So first off, look at that header. I've never seen anything like it. What? Tell us a well, little bit about how that's made. you must have seen something like it before because I think it's a 1969 312 Formula One Ferrari. Yeah. F312. It had a hot V configuration, had a very similar exhaust manifold. And this yeah. is our inspiration for the aesthetics of this engine. But of course, it also makes a ton of functional sense because, you know, the heat goes up. So having yeah. a hot side pointing up makes all sorts of sense because you don't contaminate the cold side with the hot air, right? right? From, from heat extraction from the engine bay, it yeah. doesn't actually spoil over into your intake. Yeah. By making the, the, the intake on the top, you have a better thermal Perfect. setup. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the headers, as they exit from the cold V setup, they have to wrap around the engine block, they have to wrap around the double wishbone suspension, they have to find their way around the transmission. So there's a lot more packaging complications that a conventional cold V layout entails. Yeah. When you go with a hot V, it goes up and out. Exactly. It's a much simpler setup. So for me, it makes a lot more sense. I have to give all the credit for the engine work for my friend and dear partner, Nelson Hartley out of New Zealand. Yeah. His company developed this engine for us, bespoke to our wish list, to our spec sheet. And yeah, we can't wait to hear it. So anyways, let me ask you, valves per cylinder, how many you got there? Four. Four, four valves per cylinder. Um, displacement is somewhere around six, six liters. and a half. Six and a half liters. This is an 80 degree V. 80 degree V. 80 degree V. It's an even fire engine. It's going to be perfectly balanced. It's going to make an amazing sound. Um, have you, have you, you fired need. it up? We haven't fired up yet. This is a real engine block. It's got yeah, yeah. everything real about it. We haven't fired it up yet. We're building a four cylinder version of it for emissions tests. And we'll be firing up a 12 cylinder sometime next year, early oh, next cool. year. So, this thing, there's 15 of these that you're going to be making, these, right? Yeah. And these are works of art. And I, I'm telling you right now, this thing, for me, you'll sell those 15. Now, they, they aren't uh, roadworthy, or let me, they're not legal. But at the end of the day, let me interrupt right this here. Is a, this is a work of art. Thank you so much, sir. It means a ton. But they're not road legal on purpose because we wanted to be as truthful to our vision as we yeah. possibly could be. And unfortunately, the legislature and the set of rules that we're working with make this 100% puristic vision borderline impossible. So we want to make a first few cars as close yeah. to the original vision as we possibly can. That means showing the middle finger to legislature yeah. and saying, you know what? We respect the needs for safety. The safety is paramount. Nobody should get hurt driving this thing. But when it comes to things like passive safety, like, I don't know, lane assists or like rear view cameras, parking assists and all these things, yeah. we want the most pure vehicle that connects the driver to the road with as right. few layers in between as we can possibly have. Well, I'm, <laughs> You know, I saw the pictures. Uh, Top Gear had a, had a had a thing, but in person, this is just mind blowing. I don't even know how to do some of these contours. This is just absolutely a work of art. It means a work. Means a yeah. Thank you very much. So let's do one thing. If we can push these guys out of the way, let's go and have a look at the cockpit. So, oh, we got to get this guy out of the way. And you are back. He's always trying to get on. I was trying to get into our YouTube channel. Yeah, there you go. So anyways, tell us a little bit about what you've got going on here. I could talk about this thing for hours. Ah. So the steering wheel is tiny. It's 315 millimeters, which is very similar to an early 90s Formula One steering wheel. It's perfectly round, has no switches, no toggles, no distractions. No paddles, no nothing. It is 100% committed to your driving experience. The fact that it's small, serves a purpose. It gives you more feedback from the road because obviously there's a shorter lever involved, yeah. right? So you don't get, there's just more visceral feed, feedback from the road on the smaller wheel, on the smaller steering wheel. Another thing that we wanted to accomplish is a perfectly round shape and in a hypercar package, which is so squashed down, normally you have to shave off the bottom of the steering wheel and, and make that flat in, in order yeah. to get in and out. 
but by scaling the wheel down, we kind of hit two birds with one stone. More steering feel and a perfectly round shape at the same time. Well, at the end of the day, I loved everything about it. Like I said, um, I did race a long time ago. Um, I'm so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. And this car is nothing but emotion. One thing after another, the look, the feel, the, uh, I'm, I'm sure that driving this thing would be like astronomically uh, orgasmic is the only word I can think <laughs> of. Yeah, so I, I'm really, really, I'm really, really happy about everything I've seen. So anyways, let's do this because I know you got about everybody on the planet here. I'd love here to talk to you to... in more detail. Yeah. Well, let me. When we have more time. Yeah. So anyways, you talked about the, the face and the butt don't have the same function. But I'm telling you, looking at this, it's like, it looks like it should come to life. You know, and your 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 brother's uh, your brother's music, along with this artwork. I mean, it's just amazing. You come from a very talented family. So Thank you very give much. us a little bit on. I can tell right now that you got airflow stuff going on here. Give us a little background on what you think is going on. You know what I hate? I hate when designers start to explain the airflow concept. So I usually stay uh, away from it. But I'll. I'll Obviously, incoming air, oncoming air, yeah. is full of potential energy. Correct. It's full of energy that can serve purpose. It can create downforce, and then yeah. you use it up, and then it becomes turbulent and wasted. It can serve cooling needs. Yeah. I believe for a vehicle that is not only driven on track, you need to have cooling that is, let's say, not speed dependent. You need to be able to cool in a relatively moderate speed range. That's why we have radiators in the front. We will follow up on this car with a more, even more track focused vehicle that has no cooling in the front. But here we're using the oncoming air, the full potential energy of it for cooling the front. Of course, we're also guiding it in clever ways that reduces drag and makes sure the car delivers no lift whatsoever, downforce in fact, but we do want a very minimal downforce curve because we want the car to be predictable in the way that it slides. Yeah. We, want to, we want the car to step out of traction or to step out of uh, uh, turn in in a very predictable way we don't yeah. want a snap moment and i yeah. feel that too much downforce actually makes cars too snappy yeah. i want this kind of progressive sliding that yeah. you are fully in control of what you're doing yeah. so the potential energy of the air oncoming air is in this car's case used primarily for cooling that's why we have these two blocks yeah. of radiators in the front the escapes the, the way the air escapes is yeah. on the hood obviously it's a very simple design. It's a very basic design. It's a very form follows function design. There are some aesthetic aspects of it that I would like to highlight. I envision the air coming into the car as the car inhaling that air. Yeah. And that's why it creates these full blown voluptuous positive surfaces around the front. You can see my front front their cross sections are very generous. Yeah. But as the energy of the air is used up for cooling, we go flatter with our sections. That's why the body side and the lead into the rear wheel arch are so flat. It almost illustrates the way the air has done its work and it has deflated itself a little bit. Then the rear intakes come into the picture. They grab the air that is coming from the hood spilling over to the sides. And those rear intakes serve more cooling needs and they pump up the rear fenders in a similar way. So they get voluptuous and full until their energy is exhausted and things get flatter again to the rear end. So for me, this looks like um, it's a it's it's definitely a hypercar. But to me, this is like a, a super um, I don't know a super woman. It's got like you said voluptuous curves to it, uh, but it's got an angry face, and that's that's you. You said you wanted to be angry. So to me, when you were giving your speech earlier, I'm looking at the car and I'm listening to you. And your philosophy, along with your, your brother's uh, music, I mean, this is like, it couldn't be any more harmonious. It means the world from someone of your experience, so thank you very much. Yeah, I got one, two other things. So the first 15, how much are they going for? The price point is 3.7 million. 3.7 million. We would love to sell them for cheaper, but unfortunately the development no. costs are incredibly high. No, you can't, high. because I know how much they cost. A bespoke engine, bespoke carbon tub, bespoke front and rear subframe, the needs to make everybody safe, you know, crash tests, everything else. We'd so, love to sell them. So what happens after these first 15 that are kind of like uh, showpieces? We already artwork? started on a road homologated version. 
we will preserve the spirit of this car as much as we possibly can, but the laws and the rules are laid out in a way that it will be, we will have to add ingredients yeah. that will set this one apart as the most pure one. So let me ask you, what do you think your target cost is going to be, or target sell price would be for one of these uh, less bespoke uh, type, it's still going to be bespoke, but less, uh, less... Uh, under three. Under 300,000? No, million. Oh, under three million. Well, I figured it might be under three million. We're but... limiting the run to 50 units, 54 units. 54. Twice the 27, that is our mascot. Yeah, yeah. And it's a matter of simple math to figure out what the retail price should be to make our ends meet. You got to make ends meet. That's a fact. Anyways, I can't thank you enough for letting me come down and have a look at this. Sasha, and by the way, Sasha is like Alexander in, uh, in Russian. And that's it's my real name. name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sasha is a or short Alexander. term for Sandy. I'll call you yeah, Sasha you for go. today. <laughs> ah, good. Sasha for today. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you so much, Sasha, for letting Thank us get in here. Thank you, guys. What a pleasure to be here. here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, and uh, stay tuned for more.